Hey YouTube, this is Dive Flyfish. Just want to show you something. I have constructed a measurement device utilizing small piezoelectric discs that I obtained from Electronic Gold Mine. So we have a stack of nine of these piezoelectric discs that I have wired in series and created a stack that is encased in a high voltage proof silicone housing. Um, this is the self-adherent silicone type tape as well as a silicone tube. It's all been encased in this self-adherent silicone tube and it should be impervious to any type of uh, significant electrical interference. But what I'm going to show you is, you know, here we have the stack arranged and if you apply any type of pressure to it, you're seeing the voltage transients as we would expect. I'm going to be subjugating this probe, as it were, to the electrical field between these two carbon electrodes as a means to show how electrical influences can affect and physically impart oscillatory changes in this piezoelectric stack and we can extrapolate as that may be applicable towards what happens in crustal environments with regard to our ionosphere and other solar energetic interactions with the Earth's crust, potentially indicative of changes that occur prior to earthquakes, etc. So again, this is the high voltage piezoelectric encased stacks that we'll be using to test if the electrical influence, the capacitive discharge between planets, let's say between the Sun and the Earth, if that would impart oscillatory changes that would register and could be implicative of earthquakes. So we shall test this and you shall see a corresponding test that is done on an equivalent stack that is non-piezoelectric and I will show this in the, um, the next video, that this stack of equivalent metal of non-piezoelectric standard has been wrapped identically. They are within 0.2 grams of each other. And again, the same type of insulation. And we will show that this device is in fluid electrical conductivity between the plates just as the piezoelectric one is. The only difference is um, this I made to show that the electricity is not just permeating the system and causing a high voltage spike. Rather there is an oscillatory interaction piezoelectrically that's a coupling type of device um, or coupling type of situation. So the purpose of this is to show the piezoelectric coupling with plasma, and this is to show that it's strictly not high voltage influence along the probe itself. So for what it's worth, just wanted to show you this, and the next video will follow. Hey YouTube, this is Die Fly Fish. Just to show you, this is the setup. I have an electrode here, an electrode here, ultra high voltage capacitive discharge type phenomenon from the Tesla stop bar circuit, and I have the piezoelectric stack that's been encapsulated in high electrical dielectric silicone and we will be able to measure it let's say outside of one influence within the two capacitive discharge phenomenon and below it so this will also address any questions that from previous videos as far as the electric um, discharge delta change for gravity and or electric um, weight effect so we can measure with this piezoelectric stack the probe um, from this surface, this surface, and inferior surface, and to show you that, okay? So let's start with the main point, which is between, let's say, an outside of our environment electric discharge to within the capacity of, let's say, our, our uh, ionosphere, which would be this, and or affecting some form of substrate, whether it's the Earth or this probe, as an analogy. So here we go. I'm going to place it initially right on this spacer here and I will activate I'll activate the system and you'll be able to register the 
delta of the voltage based upon piezoelectric effect and interaction. Okay. Okay, you tube the fly fish. Here is the electrode in the superior surface with the piezoelectric probe above where the two electrodes are and we'll measure any type of voltage delta. And I will activate the system now. Okay, so we see a very nominal negative influence on the piezoelectric elements themselves. And I will place it back in the center between the two electrodes and we'll do the same test again. I'll activate the system now. Okay. I'm going to shut off the system and I'm going to place this electrode in the inferior surface of that electrode and we'll turn it on. Activating system now. And we see very little oscillation to the piezoelectric stack itself, if at all. One more time, I'll take the probe out from the inferior surface. I'll place it between the two electrodes on this dielectric spacer. And we'll see what type of oscillatory influence the piezoelectric crystals we have. Activating system now. Okay, again, shutting off the system. So there we have the piezoelectric element stack encapsulated with high voltage protection to see if this type of environment um, is capable of registering and or picking up or transducing electrical influences, oscillatory pulse tile or standing wave or otherwise, and it seems to be the case. So the next test that I'll be showing you is the identical type of setup that is non-piezoelectric to show you that it's simply not a high voltage interaction. So I'll simply be swapping out this probe for my other probe to show you what um, that would show to rule out simple high voltage alterations or aberrations to the um, M to multimeter there. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, YouTube, this is the non-piezoelectric transducer that has the same mass as the piezoelectric transducer that I just showed you here. And we're going to do the same series of tests. I'm going to test this, which is conductive. If you look here, um, you can see this is an electric fluid contact. And we're going to be going and measuring the same type of influence on the top of the plate, middle of the plate, and below the plate. So we'll start with the middle just as we did before. I'll place this sensor here. We'll activate the system and this is to show if any form of just HV, pardon me, high voltage influence is going to affect the sensor or not. Okay, I'll activate the system now. As you can see, it's extraordinarily well insulated. We're probably over 50,000 volts in between those two plates and we're seeing nothing here on the uh, multimeter. I'm going to take this out, place it up here as well, activate the system. Again, no influence whatsoever, so we can rule out high voltage interaction with the piezoelectric sensors themselves. We are really looking at a definitive um, interaction between high voltage and the piezoelectric system itself, not just the, the sensor. So here we go. Again, so there's no HV interaction per se. It is the HV interacting with something intrinsically capable of resonating and or oscillating such as piezoelectric crystals and or substances within the Earth's crust that would allow such to do so. So what we may be seeing here is the ability to register as these waves come through cosmically from the sun or otherwise that are interacting with the ionosphere and other layers up high with high energy. We have something that may act as a predecessor or at least a harbinger of greater crustal reaction as a reactive type of um, oscillatory effect from piezoelectric effect. So for what it's worth, this is what I'm trying to show that the Earth's crust and let's say solar influence, Earth's influence, capacitive discharge, and the piezoelectric effect are all very much intrinsically tied to the capacity to perhaps see what 
the earthquake phenomenon and or other solar influences will have upon the Earth's crust. But this very, very small model is my attempt to show that we have a means to at least in the laboratory register how this might be happening and how it might be interacting with the Earth's crust. Thank you again for watching. All thoughts are welcome. And uh, again, I appreciate everyone's uh, critique and or views on this. Have a great day. YouTube, this is I Fish. One more thing. I want to show you another potential, in addition to the piezoelectric coupling capacity, we have here a helium neon argon tube. Let's say sun, ionosphere, Earth's core. The plasma environment within this tube itself is also a coupling device between the two electrodes. And I'll show this now. We'll activate the system, and you'll see that the plasma, albeit in dark mode, without any form of illumination, still is an adequate conductor to show a coupling device between exogenous solar activity, Earth slash ionosphere slash Earth's core as a coupling mechanism. So here we go. I'll activate the system now. So the plasma encased in this tube, albeit non-exposed, non-illuminated, still is an adequate coupling device for registering interaction between solar activity, extrasolar activity, ionosphere slash Earth slash Earth's core as a coupling mechanism. Something to contemplate. Plasma non-illuminated plasma is a very good coupling mechanism between high voltage oscillatory fields. Again, this is non-illuminated dark mode plasma, helium argon tube, dielectric, extrasolar, earth ionosphere, earth core. Activate system. You see the coupling, no illumination, but the effect is there. Thanks for watching. All thoughts are welcome. Have a wonderful night. Hey YouTube, this is Die Flyfish. Just want to show you, I have a piezoelectric transducer element here that I have wired into my extended Tesla stop bar, mini stop bar circuit. I have shunted across a combination of coils and also a custom reacting uh, plasma interface there. Uh, what I'm going to be attempting to do is to utilize the ultra high frequency AC oscillatory circuit, the Tesla stop bar circuit, as a driving circuit, albeit uh, essentially currentless, to see if we can elicit any form of transducer vibration, and on which we have here some very fine micron aluminum oxide. If this starts to vibrate, even at ultra high frequencies, we should see some sort of movement to that material. So the theory is that certain wavelengths, be it longitudinal waves, standing waves, etc., that can be generated with such a setup, which I think is a very, very small micro um, analogy to what we're seeing cosmically between planets, um, can we couple that form of energy that really essentially when we're making this 300 watt bulb illuminate, there's no discernible current that's going through the wire, the hookup wire that I have here. I have this disconnected right now for the sake of um, doing a different experiment. So for what it's worth, we will try this and we shall see if that form of input, that ultra high AC frequency oscillation will impart any reactants to the piezoelectric element and the silicon dioxide sitting on top of it. Thanks for watching. The next video will follow with testing. Okay, YouTube, this is i Fish again. Just have the setup ready to go. Have it shunted across. Actually, I'm going to use a smaller neon tube instead of a larger helium argon tube and shunt it across these coils. We shall see if we see any type of transient AC effect with this piezoelectric transducer. 
when we activate the Tesla stop bar circuit. So activating circuit, as soon as I get this focused in, okay, activating circuit. Now, is it definitely works and I think I'm now deaf because the combination of um, oscillation either from this piezoelectric or from the spark app itself has rendered me um, most incapable of hearing right now so that was my, my bad so in any event um, the high voltage AC as you can see here by the ripple effect remnant and the silicon dioxide does in fact does in fact um, interact with the resonant high frequency AC current from his tattoo stopper. So the chymatics there is obvious. Thanks for watching.